Welcome back to the COS Business Podcast. My name is Andrew Hasley, and I'm the host of the show. Today, I'm sitting here with Nate Wilson. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I run a personal training business in Woodland Park. It's about 30 minutes away from here into the mountain. Um, I do health and wellness articles for the local newspaper up there, nice. um, which has been a great way to advertise for my business too. Definitely. Um, but I do personal training up there and then I have another business down here in Colorado Springs and it's called New Visions Recovery Solutions. And I work with youth in the community who are at risk or struggling. Um, maybe they're going through the system or on probation or maybe they're having issues with drugs or mental health or behavioral issues. Um, and so we do mentoring and counseling with them. Recon Marketing is the fastest growing social media agency in Colorado. Recon focuses on becoming an extension of your business while providing social media management, review management, and digital marketing. Recon Marketing, putting you on the radar. Our next sponsor is Planet Duct. Planet Duct offers astronomical air duct cleaning with the most powerful vacuum trucks in Colorado. They have taken air duct cleaning to a new intergalactic level that is far more powerful and proactive than any on the market in El Paso County or Southern Colorado. Reach out to Planet Duct for any of your air duct cleaning needs. Our next sponsor is Sheath Underwear. Sheath Underwear has a pouch for the boys. It is everyday underwear for every man. 100% money back on the first pair if you don't like it. Visit sheathunderwear.com and enter the code COSBP20 to get 20% off your order. Our next sponsor is the People's Tiny House Festival. The People's Tiny House Festival is the nation's largest gathering of simple living, featuring van conversions, bus conversions, and tiny houses, of course. Catch the event in Loveland, Colorado, July 16th and 17th at the Ranch Events Complex. Get your tickets at peoplestinyhousefestival.com slash tickets. And now let's get back to the show. Okay, and uh, what was the name of that? New Visions Recovery Solutions. New Visions Recovery Solutions, and that's like a, a program that the city provides, or, or is it like a company? Or um, Good question. So... The city, we get a lot of referrals from like the judicial department, um, El Paso County Judicial, um, and we also get referrals from El Paso County DHS, um, and we're funded from a lot of different, a lot of different things, including okay. insurance and uh, even marijuana tax revenue. Actually, interesting. It's called Ser- uh, Senate Bill ninety four, kind of a, an oxymoron actually, but yeah, that that's... marijuana pays for kids' services. Well, but... <laughs> I think that's cool. I think that adds to it, like you know, because. Mm-hmm. Marijuana is not like never like intended to be like uh, it's not a hard drug, you know. And right. like it's like it's like they that I think that's cool that that's like they're trying to help the kids that are struggling. Like I think that's awesome. <laughs> I agree. I think it's exactly where the money should go. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, because it's there's a lot of money there, and mm-hmm. they're gonna put it towards uh, community use and things like that. I think that's that's a pretty good deal. So for sure. Yeah. I mean, I I've read some things about like. If you start smoking while you're a teen, it does have effects on your brain that's irreversible. Like, I mean, and obviously, like, that's uh, – I don't know how true that is, and I don't know if, like, in five years the study will change, you know. Sure, but And, like, sure. the brain is so, like, plastic and so, like, yeah. able to change so much. But there is – I've heard that there is some, like, if you start early, like, there is some things where it's, like – it can like permanently do some damage. <laughs> I agree. And you know, an adolescent brain is, it's real fragile because it's still mm-hmm. developing, you know? And, um, I think like you said, marijuana is definitely not a hard drug. Um, I think it's less harmful than alcohol. I think most people would agree, For sure, yeah. but there's a boundary with that. And I think kids don't necessarily need to be smoking. And I think it is for adults and for a developed yeah. brain. And, um, I could see that it would have negative effects on an adolescent brain. So. Yeah, and I think that's probably the biggest population that uses maybe. I don't I, know. <laughs> absolutely. It wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. I know what it was like when I was a kid. So, yeah, exactly. I don't think it's gotten better necessarily. Do you think so. it's cool, you know? It's like you uh-huh. want to, like, I mean, that you like you say you're smoking, you know, especially when we were younger, when it's illegal, yeah. like it oh, makes yeah. it even cooler. You oh, know? yeah, because you were a bad boy. It was yeah. a little bit of a rush that just that you were doing something wrong too. Yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember those days. Yeah. Absolutely, yep. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, man. So tell us a little bit about. Uh, we'll we'll dive into your business, and I would love to talk mm-hmm. about some of the the, the mental health stuff. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, but I'd like to to learn a little bit about what your business does and kind of uh, how you started that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it actually started from my personal training business originally. Um, I had a good friend that approached me uh, while I was doing some networking and a part of a, a coalition meeting in Woodland Park. She said, "Hey, Nate, I got a couple of kids who are coming through teen court." Um, I think they had like possession charges, so mm-hmm. it was pretty low level charges. Um, but these kids, but it could still mess up your life. <laughs> oh, absolutely. A lot of times, that's where we catch the kids. Yeah. Actually, so they they start out getting a petty charge, and then it graduates into something else. For and so sure, we, we take those kids seriously. Yeah, you know? got to catch um, catch him at that moment. You know? Absolutely. <laughs> 
And so these two kids that she was talking about in particular um, were definitely at high risk. And she said, hey, these kids, they just need a mentor in their life. I think they're interested in lifting weights and getting stronger. And a lot of the young men I work with are interested in that. It's mm-hmm. kind of just that that young boy thing. Definitely, you know? They yeah. want to get that testosterone out. They have tons of energy. And um, she's like, so could you do some mentoring with them and take them in the gym and I'll pay you for it? And I said, oh, yeah, that'd, that'd be a dream come true. That's basically what I was trying yeah. to do at the time is – develop some type of program for kids and I wanted to help kids who were like me when I was younger Mm -hmm. Um, so that's how it started and uh, eventually I made a partnership with a licensed professional counselor and he was talking about how he wanted to start his own program and um, maybe we could combine forces and see how we could have an effect on the community and develop a program so that's when we came up with the new visions recovery solutions and um, we're in the south part of Colorado Springs now and um, we definitely kind of used that activity-based component as Mm -hmm. a staple in our program. Um, We want to be kind of non-traditional. You know, talk therapy is still great, and I I don't Mm -hmm. take away from that at all. Um, And we do do that, too, because it has benefits. Um, But we're really a fan of getting the kids active with something, whether it's art or going on a hike or getting out in the community, even if it's just sitting down at a a coffee shop and talking, you know. Definitely. Um, All those sorts of different things, so. Yeah, and so so – I know when I was a kid, uh, I had a lot of anger, mm. you know, and I was I was very very like just mad at the world, you yes, know. And yep. do you, I've seen do you, a lot of the people you deal with oh, uh, yeah. are have having that. How do you oh, uh, yeah. how do you help with that? Like someone who doesn't really necessarily maybe not even want help. Yeah, and we get that all the time. Um, kids are, especially kids who have been through trauma, you know, mm-hmm. um, kids who maybe had a dad missing or a mom missing. Um, those types of kids are really angry they're reluctant they need help the most but they have the biggest walls up you know Mm -hmm. and that activity based component kind of helps with that Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes they lowered their defenses a little bit and it's like well you're not just going to sit down and talk about your feelings you're also going to go on a hike you know we'll do the incline we'll go to the gym we'll help you get some of that anger out we could do boxing you know Mm -hmm. Um, those types of things I think really help with exactly what you're talking about, the the anger issue and for sure that reluctance issue, you know. Yeah, yeah. And so, 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 how long have you have you been doing this? Let's see. New Visions has been around about three years. I've been doing the mentoring for, geez, I think we're getting close to five now. Okay. Four and a half, five. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So. And what would you say would be like the biggest like, prob like challenges you have to overcome with that? Hmm probably exactly what you're referring to reluctance Mm -hmm. um a lot of times if the parents aren't on board it makes our job really challenging because maybe we're telling them one thing and they've grown up learning something different or it's harder to schedule with them or you know if they're contradicting what their family is doing it's not going to be comfortable for them Mm -hmm. and it just makes it harder to have an effect i'd say that's the biggest thing okay yeah, yeah, and so, so how's so like it, it is a business though, and you guys mm-hmm. are you guys make profit off of it? And, Absolutely. Okay, mm-hmm. sweet. Yep. And how how do you grow that? Like, how do you make a bigger impact? So, good question. Um, networking, being plugged into the right um, the right referral agencies. There's just there's a huge need for it in the community right now, and we've mm-hmm. seen that especially in the past couple months. We've just been bombed with referrals and. Um, it's been hard to keep up actually, Mm -hmm. um, which is both a good and bad thing uh, because we have a lot of youth that are in need right now. Um, but we got, you know, I got a lot of good people on my team Mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of good people to serve them, but, um, it's really just about making the community aware that they have resources, you know? And I think a lot of people, this is an area where, where we probably struggle the most, my agency and probably other agencies, um, we struggle with connecting with schools sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, it'd be nice to connect with more schools and get cooperation there. Um, but just making ourselves visible to the community, I think, is how we're going to grow and help more kids and uh, also grow the program, too, so we can have better services for the kids and better things to do. Yeah, yeah. And, like, you, so you have a team of people that, that do. helps with, I do. That, that help, and, and, and you – you're able to or do you want to expand that yeah absolutely um right now we've we've kind of hit a capacity where we're gonna have to bring on some more people definitely because um, then you're going to be disservicing the kids if you don't exactly if you don't have either enough people or you have too much too many too many clients <laughs> that's exactly right and so i don't want to do that would never want to you know be a, a burden to the kids instead of a help so mm-hmm. um got to 
new mentor coming on soon. Um, we're looking for a female mentor soon. Okay. Um, just got to find the right person. I try to hire, um, you know, high performance people, people who I think have either been through something hard and made it through or people who are just excelling in, in the real world, you know, mm -hmm. um, we're looking for another counselor or therapist too. Maybe, maybe two of those. Okay. Um, yeah. I think we've had uh, a, a couple counselors on the show before. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One, she helps with like suicide prevention stuff and uh, right. the other is a marriage, a marriage counselor. Great. That's yeah, okay. kind of the main thing it does. I know kids yeah. probably aren't married, but. <laughs> yeah. Well, a lot of times um, there'll be an LMFT. So they're a marriage counselor, but LMFT stands for licensed marriage and family therapist. too. Yeah. So yeah. Sometimes mm -hmm. they'll know how to work with the family dynamic too. So do you so. have a, a or do you have qualifications for, for counseling and stuff like so that? Or do you actually, just actually, I don't, okay. except from what I know from my past and being on the streets and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, but my mom is actually my, my new business partner. My old business partner stepped back, and now I'm working with my mother. Um, and she's a licensed uh, marriage and family therapist. Interesting. Okay, so you know all yeah. about that stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah kind of. You, you she's better it. at it. But, yeah, we, we kind of, yeah. you know, it was helpful for our family dynamics. Yeah, okay. Um, and then we have a licensed professional counselor, too. Okay. And uh, she works with us. And then um, all my mentors are, like I said, either people who have been through something hard in their past and made it through mm -hmm. or people who are just really high performance in their life now. And want to, like, kind of help help and give back. And yeah, and they have, they have to have the heart for it, you mm -hmm. know. They have to have a, a soft spot for kids, I guess. So, for sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like, it would be funny if they hated kids. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> try to get rid of those people. Yeah, for, definitely. For around, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that just wouldn't be a right fit, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so what, what, what's your, why, you, why are you passionate about this? What's, what's your story? Yeah, so when I was a kid, um, like I said, I grew up in Woodland Park, and that small town vibe, um, I think there's a lot of pros to it. The cons are if you're a kid, sometimes you get a little bored. Mm -hmm. And we spent a lot of time partying out in the woods and camping, and um, that's not necessarily outside of the norm. Kids are, you know, prone to take risks and, and experiment with those types of things. Um, we just had a special set of circumstances in that a lot of us probably had some things that happened in our childhood that uh, weren't dealt with, and we all just kind of attracted to each other because of that. We probably had, like, a trauma bond. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was just the culture. That was the culture of, of our class. You know, we partied a lot. Um, that turned into meth use. And for me, it turned into heroin use a little later. And uh, I had a lot of struggles from the ages of uh, about 14 to 21. What, what, what even, time frame was this? So I uh, would have graduated in class of 2006. Okay. So when I was about 14 years old, that's when I started smoking pot. Mm-hmm. Um, I tried opium shortly after. I tried mushrooms and cocaine. Likewise, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it just it happened really quick. Like I mm -hmm. said, it was the culture. It was around. It was easy to get. Yeah. Um, but we just didn't know how toxic that stuff was. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, when it turns into meth. And, and that's even more toxic. Oh, toxic. That's, that's one of the worst, man. Yeah. I mean, meth is just, uh, it's Satan. You and know, I what, was, what it does to people. I actually just last week, my, my friend... He just asked me a random question and sent me down a rabbit hole with with meth actually. Okay. And I the the meth that that me and you grew up with uh -huh. is different than the meth now. Like You're right. because uh, Mexico banned like ephedrine and mm -hmm. then they found a way to use this chemical that's like uh, phenol P2P or something like that. Yep. And that mm -hmm. is way more toxic and it also mm -hmm. is it, it induces schizophrenia at a higher rate. So that's why yeah. we see a lot of like I think that it, that plays a role in the homeless homelessness uh, yep. because when you're in that state yep. you don't want to be around people you're paranoid and like you kind of isolate yourself and then that turns into to homelessness essentially and yep. like that accelerates that and that obviously existed when we were kids too but mm -hmm. like like it's even more and like it's even worse and it's also easier to produce because there's multiple methods to make this p2p uh ephedrine was just ephedrine you know yeah. and yep. so it's like now now it's like just seeping into areas in rural areas oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. at a higher rate that it never even was all the way up until like there's places that it's expanding to all the way up. And like, there were some stats like saying even in 2019, it was in being in, like just expanding and like it's, yeah. it's getting worse. You yep. know? So yeah, absolutely. It's, um, it hasn't lightened up at all. And even with the, the opioid epidemic, um, oh, that's even, meth yeah. stayed, stayed right up there. So now mm -hmm. we have meth issues. And now we also have the opioid issues too, which is and like sudden just, death, you know. Oh, it's hor yeah. That's that's how you die the quickest. You're you're using those, and um, 
referring to what you were saying about the the meth and schizophrenia um that was part of my story too uh what happened was um you know we were all doing so much partying as kids well a lot of us started passing away Mm -hmm. um a couple suicides drinking and driving accidents um being in a small town you're pretty close with these people it's a closer knit community and Mm -hmm. so you're losing friends left and right um i was doing meth at the time and it was just very traumatizing i didn't handle it i didn't process it and so i started to go crazy Mm-hmm. And I lived, you know, about two, two and a half years, pretty much as a schizophrenic. Mm. Um, I was diagnosed with diagnosed with schizophrenia and substance induced psychosis, mm-hmm. and it was the worst thing I had ever been through. It was just like being in hell every day. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, anytime like I've ever done cocaine, mm-hmm. it has. I I don't even like like I don't like doing it because mm-hmm. it does do that to me, and yeah. like it's just the more it's the worst feeling you could possibly imagine. Absolutely. Obviously, there may be some other pos- maybe maybe I don't know, but it's a terrible feeling. Uh, is what I'm getting at. Yeah, it's horrible. It's 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 mental torment and spiritual warfare every day. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, I had four or five suicide attempts, and um, my mental health was was not well. Um, and then I discovered heroin because it didn't aggravate my psychosis as much. So I turned to that. Mm, it probably like numbed it. It kind of soothed it a little bit. Yeah. yeah. It was a great self medicator, um, because it calmed me down. I just sat around and watched movies all day and, um, it was just different, you know, mm-hmm. and I needed that at the time or thought I did. Um, uh, but I was in so much legal trouble at the time that, um, I didn't last very long doing heroin before I was uh, getting ready to get sent to prison. And, uh, I didn't want to go to prison. I actually used Was to... it from substances? Yes. Yep. It was from uh I had two felonies. Uh it's basically stealing stolen stuff mm-hmm. and uh, I had two DUIs too. So um, okay. and I actually used to go to probation one building down from here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, TI <laughs> probation. And I remember sitting in there and they switched probation officers and they gave me the tough guy and this tough guy's like, Hey, you're we're gonna turn your case into a DOC case, Department of Corrections and I was just devastated. And um, that's when I I decided that doing hard drugs was probably not for me. Yeah. (laughs) And uh, spent some years drinking thereafter. I went to jail for a little bit because I got sentenced. And was it a long sentence? It wasn't bad. No, I actually got a really good deal. Um, I only did 20 days. Oh, that's good. Which is better than 18 months in prison. And that's I think that's that's a healthier way to handle something. Cases like that. I mean, mm-hmm. you send someone away for seven years, you're not doing anything for them. Right. Like, obviously, right. you needed help. You didn't mm-hmm. need to be criminalized, I guess, you yeah, know? <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, and we're, we're seeing that a lot nowadays. Um, drug addicts are going to prison at crazy rates, you know? Uh, mm-hmm. America has the highest um, incarceration, incarceration rate, yeah. rate, and, you know, we're supposed to be the freest country. Right. Um, and, you know, <laughs> very these, ironic. Yeah, <laughs> it's very ironic. And uh, you send these drug addicts in that typically aren't violent or typically aren't necessarily criminals Mm -hmm. you know um but they come out hardened criminals and they know how to sell drugs do drugs they have better connections and Mm -hmm. yeah it's not helpful it's a networking meeting yeah (laughs) yeah it's like school for criminals yeah that's what prison is so but anyway i lucked out on that and Mm -hmm. um you know once i got out of that and had seen what i'd been through and what my friends had been through i was like you know what i I just like to help people so help other kids like me Mm -hmm. so I have a, How old were you at the time? Passion for it. I was 21. I went to court on my 21st birthday, and uh, that was when I got sentenced to 20 days in jail. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I, I went to jail for a day once. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was it was just because I think it was a warrant that I had for like a uh, I think like a weed charge or something like that. Okay. And because you know it was illegal then, and yep. it still is yep. actually in Missouri. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so, Interesting. Yeah, and. And my license plate expired, so oh, yeah. they pulled me over and then took me to jail. <laughs> and it just sucked. Like, yeah. they they made me strip naked. They degraded yep. me. You oh, know? yeah. Like, yep. it was, like, I, I'm still upset about it, to be honest. Yeah, I'm still it's pissed. Yeah, <laughs> You get exposed. And yeah, I uh, I remember my first time going to jail. I was night. Did I turn 19? Or was I, yeah, I just turned 19. And, uh, that was when I was going through my schizophrenic episode Mm -hmm. and, uh, it was just, it was so traumatizing for me. I thought I was going to get beat up and raped and (laughs) my worst paranoias were there. Um, and it was still horrible, but, um, you know, before it was all said and done, every time I went in, you just get more used to it, you know? And I ended up going Mm -hmm. in like 13 times or I got arrested, Mm -hmm. um, four or five times and had to go back for sentencing and. I got arrested doing my community service once. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was actually trying to do the right thing, and then I got arrested 
doing the community service because I had a, a failure to appear for court. But, oh, okay. And they, um, they knew where you were at? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they found me pretty quick. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's interesting. So so you're 21, you get out after 20, 20 days, and do you think that was beneficial to you? Do you think that was that, that was a good thing for you? You know, it shook my foundation, which was what I needed. Um, in a way, it was good mm -hmm. because the positive to jail is that you get time off the drugs, you get time off the streets. Mm -hmm. um, the negatives are obviously the things we were talking about. A little earlier. traumatizing, yeah. Yeah, it's traumatizing, and um, you're around other criminals all the time. Mm -hmm. So um, it was helpful, though. I mean, for me, it was it was how I got clean. I didn't want to go back to jail. I was I didn't jail was bad enough. Didn't want to go to prison. Uh, so that healthy amount of fear right there was mm -hmm. was helpful in a sense, I guess. It sounds like you're a little reluctant, though. Do you think there could have been a better way? You know, I'm just a big believer that if you are going to institutionalize people for long periods of time, um, you need to give them good services while they're in there. Mm -hmm. And you look at some of uh, other countries and... I think it was. Uh, I'm trying to remember what country. Denmark's pretty pretty good. Is it Denmark? <laughs> yeah, I, think, I, I seen a like meme. Norway too. <laughs> I seen a um, meme where it was like uh, trying to, you know, I, I forget, like retire in in prison in Denmark. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, there was another one. I was watching a documentary. The they don't have any prisoners that are, are doing life sentences, and so everyone's getting out. And essentially, they give these people uh, dorms and they teach them life skills. So they're locked up in these dormitories, but mm -hmm. they teach them how to cook, do laundry, whatever else. They treat it as if they're going to be back in society. Mm -hmm. um, and the su success rate was obviously much higher. Yeah, you know? actually rehabilitating. Yes, <laughs> an actual rehabilitation. Yeah. yeah, instead of imprisonment, you know. Yeah, exactly. Essentially, like, I don't know. It's like I'm not for the, the, the current prison system we have. And it's wild. Like, the things you can... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's the it's what we got, and it works, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's in a, in a way it works. Yeah, it's, you know, I don't think it's the worst, but I also don't think it's optimal. And mm -hmm. I think if you know we're shooting to be the best country in the world, mm -hmm. then we need to work on some of those things too. And I do think that we, as a society, as humanity, we do develop and get better. I mean, we are living in like the best time it ever has been to live in the world. So it's like sure. grateful for that, you know. But. Sure. Things could obviously always, you know, we're in a hundred years, we're going to look back and be like, wow, we were doing that. Mm -hmm. exactly. <laughs> I feel like. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We see that with things we used to do. How, exactly. You know, like how we used to treat mental health back in the uh, 50s or something. Mm -hmm. like that. that wasn't that long ago. You know? Yeah. I mean, like smoking you is, was normal. And now uh -huh. we look at it as like. Like most people actually are like repulsed by it. Like, the, yeah. like I would say a good eighty percent at least, maybe yeah. ninety. You know, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's been crazy to watch because I remember in the nineties and when I was growing up, smoking was still kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was kind of the bad boy thing to do. And then once the two thousands <laughs> hit, and especially late two uh, thousands and into the twenty tens. It just became like if you smoke, you're like mm -hmm. you're dumb, dude. You know? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, you know what that does to you. you yeah, know? And it's just so. like you know, and you know, like. If I'm out drinking, you know, I'll, 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 I may have a cigarette. You know, mm -hmm. I barely ever smoke though, and like, yeah. I actually, it's, it's, that's an interesting addiction that I have actually because yep. I barely, it's like a very loose relationship. You know, yeah. I don't know. It's like, you know, it doesn't only when I'm like in a bar, like a dive bar or something, and, and like it's all around me, and it's yeah. like I'll, I'll ask someone for a cigarette. You know, yep. you know, yep. just like that's how it is. You know, but that, that, I, that's even on a rare occasion because like, mm -hmm. I don't go out to bars that much. Uh, so it's like, I'm not even around it that much. And that's the only time I ever even like crave or want one. Mm -hmm. And so yep. it's like, what is that? Like, <laughs> yeah. That was the same way. Uh, cigarettes and alcohol have a, just a funny relationship together. Mm -hmm. And once I quit drinking, I quit smoking cigarettes. Well, I mean, too, I, I, so. I, I drink all the time, you know, uh -huh. and yeah. you know, it's like, but I don't have a, uh, an urge to smoke unless I'm around other smokers. Gotcha. You know? Maybe okay. it's a social thing. Like. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's much better than how it used to be years ago. So mm -hmm. if, if smoking is kind of a social thing, but yeah, yeah. Um, kind of wish the same thing would happen with like fentanyl and some of those harder things like to are, be a social thing. <laughs> well, just to be frowned upon more. Oh you know? yeah. Yeah. Well yeah. it is. I, I, I think, you know, it is frowned upon. Um, I just like to see people get away from it. Just yeah. Cause people, so they don't go around advertising that they true, do. True. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Um, but just see more people get abstinent from it. Cause I think that's one of the. 
And that's one of the biggest issues mm-hmm. we're having right now. And I don't even understand how you could even like people actually go out and buy that stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, yep. but most of most of the deaths actually are accidental. Yep. Like they mm-hmm. don't even know that they're consuming it's it. It's you know, waste. Yeah. and that's some bullshit. <laughs> yeah, and especially right now, it's uh, it's in Percocets a lot. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, not actual Percocets from the pharmacy, yeah, but, you know, made. street made mm-hmm. Percocets. They're lacing it with fentanyl. And cocaine. It's getting and whatever laced with, else. Like, you know, yeah. just, to, just to give it that kick, you know, yep. or make people mm-hmm. that more addictive to it so they'll come back for more. It's yep. like, yep. so screwed, you know. Yeah. <laughs> the cigarettes mm-hmm. are the same, too, you know, but mm-hmm. they don't cause sudden death. It's right. insidious. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we're seeing that now, and, um, you know, we're trying to do our part to, to help out with that, help the kids out, mm-hmm. teach them abstinence, so. Yeah, does it? Do, do you know the stats on like fentanyl and stuff? Um, man, I was actually at a symposium. I'm trying to remember what the new stats are for this year. They keep increasing. That's mm-hmm. what I know. Um, is it ma- major? What's the what's the age like? Is is it mostly like teenagers, kids? Uh, um, I, maybe twenty. I wouldn't say mostly kids. As far as overdoses, you mean? Yeah, yeah. It's young adults. I think it's yeah. I think it would be young adults. Yeah. yeah. What is it like eighteen to twenty four or something like that? I think those are the main ones that are dying right now. And I actually have anecdotal like evidence for that. Actually, one of my my friends I grew up with died Mm -hmm. last year from like almost a a year. Like he thought he was taking something else. Right. And you know he just passed away. Yep. And like it's just like, you know, some of my favorite artists you know passed away like from that. You know, like Mac Miller is is Uh, a uh prime example. He didn't know he was taking fentanyl. Exactly. And like. He was go- going to do a lot more things with his life, you know. Yep. He, you know, like, and so it's just like it's it's, it's uh, sucks. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it's a it's a huge killer right now. Um, uh, there's an epidemic in America, and it's it's mental health issues, it's mm-hmm. suicide, and it's substance abuse. And it's way yeah. more than COVID. <laughs> absolutely, it doesn't even compare. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't even compare, you know. And when the whole COVID thing was happening, that was the thing I kept thinking about because, um, you know, AA meetings shut down. Um, services were only done over telehealth, which is better than nothing, mm-hmm. but it's, you know, and it may even got people. people to get in that, you know, so there may have been yeah. a benefit to that as well, too. There's Some always, people. there's always, yeah, uh, yeah. two, two sides. To absolutely. Story, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. It was just tough to watch because mm-hmm. you knew all they were talking about was COVID and you knew there's a lot of people suffering. And it did, it did too. increase, you know, like yeah. isolating, you know, yep. and, and, like Domestic we're social violent. creatures, you oh, know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so it's like. I mean, I'm a pretty, like, introverted, you know, like, like my solitude, but, yep. uh, you know, we still thrive off of that social interaction, and I actually have never done a podcast on, the like, Zoom. Like, it's always been in person. I, I stopped doing the podcast for four months, actually, because of it. Okay. Uh, because I wasn't going to do the Zoom thing. I was like, no, it's, awesome. it's in person only. And yeah. then I was going to shut it down, and then in August 2019, when I got it back, when I decided, I was like, man, I don't know if I want to do this more. But, and then I was like, if I am going to do it, I'm going to go hard. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah. And so I got this office because I was going to people's places, you know, and like going to people's offices and setting up my microphone, like with no no really wow. location. And so I was mm-hmm. like, if I'm going to do it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it right, you know. Like that's I'm cool. going to do it how Joe Rogan does it. Yeah, <laughs> dude. No, that's great. That's a uh... – that's a good go-getter attitude. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And it's like, you know, and then I was doing five episodes a week, too, from the start. I was like, Ooh. if I'm if I'm going to do it, I'm going to – if the show's going to grow based off of the connections, based off the relations, based off of the guests. Uh-huh. And because if everyone's – if someone's on the sh- – if everyone on the show is sharing their episode, they're exposing it to new people. Uh, now we actually do some other methods to help grow the show, but, I mean, that is still a major component, you know, like yeah. – having people on the show is is important obviously it's a it's a show for that but sure, sure. <laughs> it's a community show and like i do look at it as like it's almost like a community service mm-hmm. uh i mean we do make money off of the sponsorships mm-hmm. but we don't charge people to come on the show right and like it's and and some people actually don't reach out because they think that we're, we're charging or they won't reply There's a because, lot of people yeah, that do yeah mm-hmm. and like i mean i i say don't reply but we haven't had to reach out to someone for over a year actually like wow. people come to the show and, and that's great and i'm curious actually how did you find out about the show let's see i'm pretty sure i saw an ad on facebook yep that's kind of one of our newer methods that yeah we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah facebook's always a good one yeah i, yeah. I use facebook a lot too 
Um, and then I saw that you had my friend Sparkle on here. Yeah, yeah. She uh, she helps with the in a similar arena that you yep, do. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Uh, we're connected. She's great. And I saw, what was it? I think it was last week's episode uh, with Jacob Montoya. Yeah. He him. does some really awesome stuff with yeah. software, man. Yep. <laughs> so I actually need to connect with him on a, on a website. But, Definitely. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> that kind of reminded me that I need to connect him. I don't know if he does website him, but... design. I can't remember. Did you listen to the episode? Um, I listened to part of it. Okay. He was talking about, it was an app, right? Yeah, it's an app that okay. helps gym owners. Uh, okay. Yep. And it provides SaaS uh, service uh, software as a service to help gym owners uh, to help gym owners, you know, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> with their like all their like or like their the 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 business side of things and like helping them organize their, their self and helping them. It has built in systems that really helps that's designed for, for gym owners yeah, okay. and fitness professionals. And it's if you search on the app, it's like if you type in like personal trainer in the app store it like pops up like top top oh, that's five great yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's doing a real good job with that that's awesome <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah well it sounds like something i could use help with because that's i like providing the service the business stuff is like yeah i'm not an organized guy so <laughs> yeah yeah i'm kind of i'm a chaotic organized yeah i'm, exactly. I'm chaotically organized i have yep. adhd as well oh, okay, and i actually yeah. don't medicate like which Same you here. know adhd is meth I mean, yep. the the medication for that is is methamphetamines. It's Adderall, but right? it's and, and I just when I did my research last last week and I was telling you about the stuff about like meth, uh, I used to I used to say it's the same thing. Uh, it is as far as it's methamphetamines, mm-hmm. but it is not the same thing. Right? Like it's it's like that that crap you get on the streets. Mm-hmm. That is. That and a crap ton of other stuff, you know. Uh-huh. It's like it's yeah. so bad for you. It's horrible. And like if you're taking, if you actually have ADHD, it can be very beneficial. You know, mm-hmm. I get a lot of things done, but because I have ADHD, it it comes. It, I have to work a little harder to get that stuff done. I feel yes. And yep. so it's like, but I still I still make a habit. You know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's making habits, and um, I have ADD too. And uh, I think that's why I liked meth so much, honestly. Mm-hmm. And we see that a lot in the community with kids who have ADHD or ADHD. Because it kind of helps, you know. Calms them down. <laughs> yeah. It makes them feel like, oh, I can. Helps them get things think, done, you I know. I can breathe, you know. <laughs> and yeah. And that's when I did meth for the first time. That's how I felt. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, I feel like myself. Plus the rush at the beginning. Life. Plus, the, <laughs> you get high too, so it's yeah. not. You know, there's that and then too. it's like, it's bad. Like yeah. then, then it's a terrible feeling. You know? Yeah. The well, come down is the worst. <laughs> oh, yeah, because it starts great. And you might even be hyper what i want to say hyper focused hyper sensitive to things you might actually perform better at certain things and um there's an intervention episode of a woman uh, i think she was going to the the olympics for shot put or something Mm -hmm. she got into meth and she did a shot of meth and then she went and did shot put and like made a record or something you know yeah so that initial high that's another reason why it's so addicting you're Mm kind of some people just chase a better that better version yeah. of yourself, so you think. Mm-hmm. So you think, yes. <laughs> but you crash. You don't oh, yeah. stay up there, mm-hmm. and you get strung out, and you keep chasing that, and you don't sleep, and it just turns into. Yes, not bad sleeping stuff. itself uh, is very, very bad. Yeah. Like, like mm-hmm. even without meth, <laughs> that can really mess your crap up. You know, mm-hmm. there's that guy. I don't know if you, you, everyone heard about the story. The Chris Watts guy. Uh, who killed his kids and his wife? Uh, yeah, yep. strangled them. Yep. Uh, it, it was like Horrible. if you if you study like what was going on like in the situation, he was getting like two hours, like maybe like barely any sleep. Really, and so he may have like induced psychosis on himself, wow. you know, and like okay. just snapped. I don't know, That's, but like wow. very terrible. I'm not saying that. it justifies anything he does, sure, sure, but it it definitely can help explain. His actions. Absolutely. And so it's like, yeah. get your sleep, guys. <laughs> sleep is important, man. I love sleep, especially since I lost out on so much. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And especially as a, as a businessman, I want to be as clear-headed as I can and it, be. It, yeah, you know? and it definitely is, helps with that, you know? Mm-hmm. And, like, it's just no bueno to not be sleeping, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, like, there's so, much, there's so much studies that are just coming out recently in the last couple of years that really explain the function that sleep has and mm-hmm. how important it is to get seven to eight hours or depending on your, your body or what you, whatever you need. And that helps you actually be more productive. <laughs> it helps, it help, like, you, you think I need to stay up to get this stuff done, but, like, it's like you could actually, if you sleep, you're going to be focused, you're going to be faster, you're going to be better, you know, yep. it's like you're going to be happier. <laughs> That's exactly it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did an article on that uh, recently, and it was on basically how HGH is released when you sleep, and mm-hmm. um, that's what keeps you young. You know, that's what rejuvenates everything, mm-hmm. whether it's physically, mentally, 
all that stuff all it's like magic you know you go to sleep and it's mm-hmm. like you're you're growing in your sleep you know you're getting young it's like the fountain of youth essentially. for sure so. and like there's a guy who who described it you know from an evolutionary standpoint like that this is something that puts you in the most vulnerable state uh if if it wasn't vital and very important nature wouldn't evolve that you yep. know so it's yep. like <laughs> very true <laughs> it's like because what you do when you're sleeping you're like Anything can happen to you. Uh-huh. Right, right. <laughs> like you're very vulnerable and uh-huh. like nature is about survival. So it's like mm-hmm. that's opposite of that. Yeah. So unless it was like very necessary, you know, it's like there's a lot of good things that happen. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And like, yeah, I mean, I, I don't mean to go off on a tangent on that, but yeah, <laughs> I like sleep. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, like I said, I've lost out on so much sleep. Um, I, I stayed awake for two weeks once and that was my breaking point so i like sleep nowadays yes. i like to get my sleep <laughs> seven to nine hours so for sure yeah and yeah, and yeah so where are we do we want to go next you know um good question um i have a book coming out soon okay um and i've been working on it for three years nice and probably could have done it a little quicker i just you know had some things going on and wasn't as focused, um, Mm -hmm. but it's basically about how um, addicts or people who have been through trauma or hard things in life are actually built for maybe being a business owner or maybe being really successful in life. Um, And my book kind of breaks down some of the skills that I learned while I was on the streets and using drugs. Um, And even some of that mindset as far as being like hyper vigilant about getting my drugs doing whatever it took, whether I was stealing this or that and the other, and how I use that for success in business these days. I have that same type of mentality. Mm-hmm. I, I'm crazy about what I do, you know, helping kids, fitness, all that. I'm obsessed with it. I'm just not using drugs, you know. Yeah. But I'm still kind of in that same crazy mentality. For know? sure. I mean, and I think that's a, a very typical ADHD, AD, uh, a phenotype kind of like yeah. – we struggle to have focus unless it's something we're very interested and passionate about. Then our, our super abilities, you could say, come out. Because uh, there's definitely, you know, there's the bad sides of ADHD, but there's also very benefits. Uh, like, very well benefits. Like, ADHD is actually, like, a strength before the industrial evolution, you know? Like, having, like... They, like when we're like in the woods, you know, it's like as we evolved, you know, like that was actually selected for for a reason too as well, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> and so it's like that's one of the super abilities we have is we can hyper focus on something mm-hmm. when we need to do it. Like we may procrastinate if it, if it's something we don't want to do, but when it comes time, we can like real. I like last month. I hear I go ADHD everywhere right now. Uh, I'm the same way. <laughs> last month, um, I needed to get some editing done, and I was kind of putting it off. I didn't realize how much editing it was. It was, but I ended up from Sunday at 10 a.m. editing. I, mean, I, t- I took an I took an hour like I took a lunch break, you know, and like I still ate. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, from Sunday at 10 a.m. to Monday at 10 a.m., I was editing 24 hours. No drugs, no meth, no dude. nothing, dude. <laughs> and like, I'm not, I'm, it's not. It's not like, I kind of I'm kind of bragging about that. But like, that's good. yeah, that's but great. like, it, it's not. I don't suggest it, but I needed to get that stuff done. Sure. And this is where I think that medication could help me because if I was properly medicated and taking it re- like appropriately, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have that buildup wouldn't have happened. I would have been able to maintain a steady pace throughout the week sure and so that's why i do want to kind of like talk to a counselor maybe or a psychiatrist and and maybe get get prescribed and do it the right way Mm -hmm. but the reason i don't take it because i don't like the way it makes me feel right you know Mm -hmm. you don't (laughs) want it to deaden those things mm -hmm. you know it made me feel like a zombie it made me feel emotionless exactly (laughs) and that's like you said we you know it was a strength for some people before Mm -hmm. the industrial revolution and what we're seeing nowadays um you know, ADD and ADHD is basically a lack of dopamine in the brain. It is, yeah. You're just not interested in stuff, so your your brain's just like going everywhere looking for a stimulus. Mm-hmm. You know, and I use beer as a stimulus. Stimulant, yeah, actually. it was the same. That's why I drank because mm-hmm. it stimulated me and it kind of calmed the anxiety down. Yeah, which is crazy because um, it's a depressant, you know. <laughs> yeah, and that's you know we see it in school all the time. We see you know the kids who are trouble, right? Mm-hmm. The ones who can't focus. I was one of those kids. I couldn't focus on my schoolwork. It was it was fucking boring, dude. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't. It didn't stimulate me, and so I ended up finding that uh, that feeling or that stimulation through drugs. Mm-hmm. But these kids in the education system needs to work on this. It's not set up for these kids. These kids might be good at other things. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of those kids end up being business owners. They Mm -hmm. end up, um, 
being really hyper focused sometimes like like you were you mm-hmm. know and of course that comes with a boundary too like you know 24 hours straight is pretty crazy yeah <laughs> um, but there's potential there you mm-hmm. see someone who works that hard and you're like okay that, that person can do something you know definitely yeah. they just have to find something like you were saying something that interests them you mm-hmm. know and i think a lot of those kids who could potentially be very successful end up turning into drug addicts because they they get lost in the education system they get you know they mm-hmm. get f's on everything and it's like well when they get out of school what what opportunity is them or is there for them you know yeah yeah I mean, I got pushed through the system, you know, like, mm-hmm. you know, that little, a lot of kids do, you know, they just yep. pass them on, you know, like yep. there's some like I shouldn't have passed first grade because I didn't even know how to read because I didn't focus, you know, like I, I could barely read, you know, like mm-hmm. and like, you know, obviously I learned how to read, but I still struggle with it. You know, mm-hmm. like I have dyslexia. I'm certain I've not been diagnosed with it, but like it's the signs are there. You yeah. know, <laughs> yeah. you, you kind of know when you uh-huh. know and like when you study enough too. like I love studying. I love learning about the brain. I've been since my early 20s. I've been like on a constant like tr- like just a constant path of just I've been obsessed with learning, you know, sure. and I, I know a lot of random facts, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but I just like those things, like they kind of maybe something that I learned here. It may have seemed random at the time, but wow, it applies over here. Yeah. And so it's like it's like learning all this stuff. And I, I don't know. I just love learning, you know, <laughs> Yeah, I'm the same way. It's like you were saying earlier, we're chaotically organized, basically. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I hated learning in school. Like yeah. I yep. loved learning in my 20s when mm-hmm. I was doing it on my own terms. <laughs> same here. Yeah. Because you have to find something that interests you, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And get that dopamine going a little bit. Yeah, right? yeah. And, and everyone's different. So, yeah. yeah. I think that's where the education system needs to needs to work on mm-hmm. that. And I don't necessarily have the answer to that. For sure. But. And maybe maybe it is, you know? Like like I was saying earlier, we are evolving. We are getting better. We mm-hmm. are we are finding better processes. We like, like That's why I brought up the cigarette thing. It's like, you know, we're learning things as a society, as a humans, and, and like just trying to just – we're still figuring it out. There's so many things that are so – like I do believe like – there's been estimated about there's one of my random facts <laughs> estimated that about a hundred billion people have lived on earth since wow. uh since you know people evolved yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like that's actually like it's a hundred billion it's like that's actually i i thought it was like it, until you put a number it kind of helps you kind of see like the whole sure, picture you know if yeah. there's six billion now and like the last few hundred years is really accelerated like oh, yeah. six billion people living at the same time is a new thing you yeah know? <laughs> absolutely and so like over the last like thousands of years it's estimated a hundred billion people and i Jeez. do believe we are going to I think it's going to it's going to take about, you know, 150 billion people to learn how to eradicate uh like death by by natural causes actually. Okay. And like I do think we're we're like we're learning things of how to live longer and like sure. how to not let diseases kill us, you know, exactly. maybe a car accident, mm-hmm. but even with even with Teslas or something like that or automated cars, car accidents are going to be gone too. Sure. So it's going to be really hard to die uh-huh. and people are going to live as long until like something like tragic like just, just like, I, I guess, obliterates them. <laughs> sure, yeah. And so I, I believe like maybe it's just taken a hundred billion people to figure that out. You know. Yeah. To figure out yeah. what it's taken a hundred mm-hmm. billion people to figure out a lot of things. You know, like right. to, to I don't know. It's, I'm going off on a tangent now. <laughs> no, I, I hear you, man. And now I'm uh, getting in a little woo woo areas. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm right there with you. I, uh, I, I think we are learning how to extend life, obviously, mm-hmm. and it's. There's still gonna be that component of people who don't want to take care of themselves, though. Yeah, you know? well, well, maybe we could figure that out too. <laughs> that would be that would be the the golden uh, that would be the true fountain of youth, right there. Yeah, yeah. How do you get someone that doesn't care about living to want to live? You know, yeah. take care of themselves. Somehow? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's probably some good psychologists who have kind of have been working on that problem. You know, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, and we have made leaps and bounds there too. Even in uh, the fitness industry, we're finding out like. It's not so much what you know. It's like how are you going to get that person to grasp it? You mm-hmm. know. Um, I mean, I know how terrible monsters are for me, and I, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I still yeah. drink them. I got addicted to them back in again back into back in like December, you uh-huh. know. And it's kind yeah. of just been. I've slowly like I've got. I was t- getting one like every single day. Yep. Uh, yep. But now I've slowly kind of like not so much. But and that's what it's about moderation. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can enjoy things just in moderation. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, I like I like the taste, you know. Yeah, I like, yeah. I, it's the sugar, you know, mm-hmm. and sugar. This uh, that's one thing I was gonna 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 lean on and on on the the cigarette thing. I think mm-hmm. maybe in fifty years, the way we look at sugar is gonna be the way we look at cigarettes now. That's true. And I think it's going to be child abuse if you give your kids sugar. That's actually <laughs> pretty legit. Dude. Yeah. I hope we get to that point because you're right. I mean, mm-hmm. sugar's it's like a it reacts to the uh, it reacts in your brain and your body uh, similar to cocaine. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. And but honest, it may be even worse for, than cocaine. Like, it's yeah, crazy. Yeah, because you eat more of it and, you know, it you is, give yourself permission. It's more available. The effects on the population are worse than cocaine, Absolutely. I think. That's true. <laughs> You're right. You're right. Like, it's crazy, man. Mm-hmm. Like, and, like, you know, so, some of these things that I, I I say, a lot of people are like, man, this guy's crazy. But, like, no, it's, they'll see. It's <laughs> yeah. I actually posted something on Facebook, and I got a lot of kickback for it because I said um, – I can't remember the exact verbiage, but I said, don't fool yourself. The cheeseburgers, the cigarettes, the overusage of caffeine will kill you just as quick as the drugs will. And I got a lot of kickback. And there was some legit uh, points made. like For sure. You know, someone brought up heroin, for example. And heroin, if you take heroin for a long enough time, you're probably more likely to die from that. Mm -hmm. And that's because it's laced with fentanyl these days and – there's a lot of other factors that play into that, you know, mm-hmm. how much heroin are we talking? When do they start? How many times a day are they using versus like how quick would eating at McDonald's every day kill you? And mm. it's like, well, we, we watched that documentary Super Size Me. That guy got jacked up in 30 days, dude. Yeah. He was doing a lot, though. He was doing a lot. <laughs> and that's obviously excessive. Right? I like how I, I, t- I said it like it was a drug. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's similar, yeah. man. And uh you know, I would it be fair to say that like eating a cheeseburger is as bad as smoking a cigarette? I think maybe. You know? Yeah. And I don't think people think on those terms. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what I was trying to say. And you know, it's social. Yeah, media because people. they're both just seek. <laughs> they're both like as as insidious. Like mm-hmm. they, they both have that lo- that same length of of death ratio. I guess you could say. Yeah, you know, yeah. cigarettes and cheeseburgers. You mm-hmm. know, it's like uh, I don't know. Like I I don't know the stats. You know, but I I would sure. assume it may be the same thing. Yeah, I think they're even like they similar. even look like each other. Yeah, because I, I did a little research after I got some kickback on that, and I found Definitely. out that, um, well, obviously obesity is a huge epidemic, but um, I don't remember the exact statistics. I'd have to pull it up, but you know, drinking and it was mainly like drinking and doing cocaine. If you do those regularly, and that's kind of again, there's a lot of specifics we don't have here. It'll take. 20 30 years off your life mm-hmm. it's like would that be safe to say that um that's that's similar you know between obesity and using drugs that's it's similar you mm-hmm. know maybe not the same like i said the factors are different but yeah, yeah it was, i would it was i would agree <laughs> yeah. yeah man so um i was there i was thinking of something that i wanted to expound on but it, yeah. it, it left my mind yeah. but uh but yeah, man, this has been a great conversation, a great Absolutely. talk. Absolutely. And uh, is there anything else you'd like to let people know? Where can people find out if if they need your help or if they know someone that may need your help, or yeah. uh, whether it, it be in the fitness mm-hmm. or whether it be in with with the fitness and the uh, and the kids, you know? Yeah. So if you uh, are interested in getting fit and you're in the the mountain area in Woodland Park, uh, my email is natewilson zero two two three at gmail dot com. Um, if you're interested in, like, if you have a kid who's struggling or even an adult who's struggling with addiction or mental health issues, um, you can check out newvisionsrecoverysolutions.com. And that would probably be the best way that we can help you out there. So. All right, sweet, man. Well, this has been great. And I, I yeah. appreciate you coming on the show. And, yeah. and yeah, this is uh, the CEO's Business Podcast. And we'll see you guys on the next one. <laughs>